Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and today I want to talk to you about AHCI, another feature in semi-retro computing, the SATA 2 era, Core 2 Duo era. This is a Core 2 Duo system right here that I'm tinkering on for a video, and it has this new feature called AHCI. It's an old feature now, but it was new back then, and people didn't know how to use it correctly. Today I'm going to show you the difference it made if you set your computer upright, which many people didn't. Now, before I get into the build, I just want to boot around BIOS here a little bit real quick to show you a little, little something something that was uh, new to the game back then that screwed up a lot of people, causing them to build their computers wrong. And that is if we go into storage configuration. You see, this era is when we started with the uh, SATA 2 controllers, or SATA 300, or SATA 3 gig, whatever you prefer to call it. And with SATA 2 came a new feature called AHCI. Now, if you see here, we have configure SATA as IDE which means the SATA controller would use IDE emulation so that any operating system could be easily used with that SATA drive. The problem was you were theoretically neutering the performance of your drive. If you had a SATA 300 drive, you were virtually running it at SATA 150 spec or even IDE spec. And if I recall correctly, certain features like NCQ might not work properly. I don't know. And in some cases, hot plug wouldn't work either or you could corrupt your drive trying. In order to set up a computer properly, you had to enable HCI mode. It was never enabled by default back in this era. Unfortunately, unless you were an enthusiast being pushed into the DirectX 10 and 11 and more than four gigs of RAM camp, you weren't ready to commit to Vista 64 yet and you were still holding out with XP. If you turned on HCI, you might have to F6 third-party SCSI RAID drivers in order to get the system running again. So it was very easy for people to just park it in IDE and call it a day, but they didn't know they were leaving performance on the table. A lot of amateur builders at the time, quite frankly, their systems weren't running correctly. Now, lucky for you, there was one or two workarounds that often came with a system. For one, this board doesn't have it, but you could select which ports were IDE and which ports were HCI. See, we also had SATA CD-ROMs or SATA DVD drives around this time too. And if you had an AHCI controller, your Windows wouldn't have been able to boot off of it to install. So they would have this IDE emulation on maybe two of the six ports or half of the ports so that you could plug the CD DVD drive into there, enable AHCI on your boot drive and go to town. What this meant was if you did accidentally install with IDE enabled, you could move it over to the IDE ports, enable AHCI on the new ports. Once you booted to Windows, you could upgrade the drivers and then Windows would be able to boot off of them. If I turn on AHCI right now, Windows is probably not going to boot or it might now because I've updated all the drivers. But the other thing that uh, would have came on motherboards this time is it wasn't uncommon to have a whole secondary SATA controller. And this one's no exception. Seen right here are two extra SATA ports that are kind of different from the rest. For a board like this to have eight SATA ports, that's, that's a lot. Like boards now don't even have that many, but then we're not parking as many spin drives, are we? This was an additional silicon image controller and it was, it was super weird. But in this exercise, we should be able to move our hard drive over to that port. And then assuming we installed the drivers correctly when we set up Windows, it should boot off of it. Oh, it's trying to. Is it gonna go? It's jammed up, but this is kind of normal for what I'm doing here. Windows is a little bit confused and it could take a moment for it to, see, figure out what's going on with the hard drive change. And there it is. And if we do a little explore to device manager, serial ATA storage controller, uh, it's funny because it's not actually showing up in here. Actually, that might be it there. Yeah, I don't recognize that, but I I'm guessing that's it. So now we can go ahead and restart. Now we can update our storage configuration to AHCI. Ah, you see now it wants to update the drivers. I do believe we should have the software on file. Oh, no, no. We're gonna have to do it a little bit more uh, specific to manual. Tuh. DVD, oh yeah. Ah, as if device manager's not just there. You are a strange one, Mr. Grinch. Uh, which one is it? PCI device. PQ5 drivers. Uh, it might have 
might be in here. And we got it, Intel SATA HCI controller. It's very different. And AHCI was important for many reasons because IDE emulation didn't work smoothly. And you would notice weird things happen to your system. Stuff as weird as like your mouse reception being herky jerky and, and just, you know, weird ghosts. Weird, weird ghosts in its blood, just kind of making it. And then you install the HCI and everything sorted right TF out. So now, well, let's shut her down, swap her back over, see if it makes a difference in performance. Sure enough, with the drivers installed, it booted into Windows. So now, uh, let's go uh, consult uh, waifu best girl Crystal Discmark here and compare it to existing numbers. I'm also doing RAID tests here too. More on that later. So let's see what it has to say with just a, a mild manner 256 meg. Oh, that doesn't make a lick of sense. Run the test again. You know, I just had a herpy derpy moment. The drive I'm trying to benchmark here is only SATA 150. I'm not gonna see a difference in performance. Wow, that kind of destructs the whole purpose of this demonstration. I need to score a proper SATA 2 drive. Okay, I know what to do. All right, so we have uh, best girl waifu uh, crystal disc mark here. Uh, I have connected as a secondary drive, freshly formatted, a Western Digital Velociraptor 150 because it has SATA 2. Silly me, I tried running this test on the, the boot drive. It's only SATA 1, so I saw no difference. We're going to try it in IDE mode and see uh, what kind of performance we get out of it. All right, so far, so far we're seeing 12647, 12562. These are the real world settings. I never understand why we get such a slow random read and random random rights just don't seem right. 21216, write ops, 49194, read rops. No, I got that backwards. And then our latency is as such. Now the only caveat here is that most drives might not be able to exceed the read through of a SATA 150 controller. So we might not see number gains switching to AHCI. Now, uh, just for apes and arshids, because we can hot plug this slave drive, let's uh, let's uh, bump it over to the Marvel controller and see what happens. Hmm, we crashed the computer apparently. Nice. Windows, you suck. It's not even the boot drive, why do you care? Because HCI wasn't enabled, that's why it cares. Hot plug is not working on this one. Well, it's a happy accident, because while we could restart, let's set this over to HCI. Wow, you're excited, bud. Super excited. All right, best girl, what do you got for me for the Marvel controller? Oh, there we go. Wait, was I calling it a Marvel controller? It's a silicon image controller. I'm getting it confused because this chipset doesn't have onboard IDE. They add it with a separate Marvel hard drive controller, which might actually also be RAID. IDE RAID was some oddball thing they were putting on motherboards a little bit earlier than that. Ah, our numbers are identical in some spots and lower on other spots with the Marvel controller, which I do believe is probably going through the PCI bus. So that ought to bottleneck it over a direct, uh, over a direct chipset controller. Random writes better. Actually, these numbers are faster. That's faster, that's faster, that's faster. Sequential write is the only thing that's slower on that controller. Now we should be able to hot plug did we? Oh yeah, yeah, system didn't crash. Let's bump her over. We should get the little prompt at the bottom. We did not, but the drive still exists. So, all right, HCI, go. Really where you would know performance differences like this would be more on SSDs. Oh, maybe I should have been running this test on an SSD. Third time's the charm, right? Ah, see our sequential read and write are the same simply because that is the drive saturation point. It's not going any further, but our random has increased in speed, definitely. And even though those numbers seem small, they translate to real world performance. Same with the, the IOPS, we are seeing an increase right there, significant increase. 4327.35 and 1645.27, those are the lowest numbers. Those uh, microsecond, u-second specifications is lower better, that's your latency. So as you can see, it's hard to draw the biggest conclusion from these small numbers, but enabling AHCI definitely makes a performance difference. And we would probably notice a more profound difference if we were using a modern RSS SD. So let's go ahead and uh, 
splice this in here some way, somehow. I even feel just clicking around, the, the system feels more responsive. Oh yeah. So let's, let's see what happens here now with an SSD. Now this is HCI mode first. See right off the bat, we are seeing 269.72. Now that drive's capable of higher speeds than that, but that's in effect maxing out the controller's capabilities. Oh, those latencies on an SSD are so low. Oh yeah. 1658057. This just goes to show you how much faster an SSD is. These numbers are astronomically or orders of magnitude different than what even the fastest spin drives of the era were capable of. Now let's reboot back into IDE mode and see just how much it's gonna neuter that SSD's performance. Oh yeah. The system feels a little bit more sticky with HCI turned off, even though I'm only on a SATA one drive. I'm booting off a 74 gig Raptor in old school. All right, so if there's a difference in controller speed, we're gonna see it now. What you got for us, waifu? Ooh, surprising to get 242 megabytes a second read off an IDE setting. Ha ha ha. Ah. So sequential read goes from 269 to 242. Right goes from 265 to 248. Random read goes from 33 to 29. Random write goes from 67 to 64. Read IOPS go from 8,000 to 7,000. Write IOPS go from 16,000 to 15,000. And then our latency doth also increaseth. <laughs> Well, either way, they aren't huge deviations. And in fact, getting that kind of speed, I guess maybe this IDE emulation is good. It's a driver level thing, and you can still get a fair amount of bandwidth, though that bandwidth is definitely some margin slower. And even though the numbers don't show the best results, your experience and the feeling of the computer, I do find is improved. And that could be because of the NCQ feature, native command, oh, and QC, native command, queen, 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 queen. Well, it was all the rage back then because it was supposed to have some way of buffering and predicting what you were gonna do next. Or, you know, I forget what NCQ does. N NCQ, yeah, NCQ, whatever. So while I'm at it as an extra value added bonus, I'm tinkering with this system to get it ready for a build video, showcasing what it is and what it can do. I wanted to get it all set up. I had to fix the hard drive situation with AACI, but chances are I'm gonna be running it off Raptor RAID as per period presentation of this system. So what I wanted to do is experiment with the different RAID controllers here. Now I've already gone ahead and pulled results from the Dell RAID controller of FX60 fame and the built-on silicon image controller in super speed mode. It's super weird how that super speed silicon image controller works. Now these two extra ports natively are a built-on RAID controller. According to the manual, if you only use this one port, and by the way, this is specific to this P5Q motherboard. According to the manual, if you're running normal SATA mode and you only want to run an individual drive, only the orange port would work. Otherwise, you had to go into this drive expert control here in BIOS, which is a very strange way of doing it. It's the only time I've ever seen it implemented this way, but it's kind of, it's kind of handy. If we go into mode change, we have three options. Normal mode is just a SATA controller. Super speed mode is effectively a RAID zero. And easy backup mode is a RAID one. So if we go ahead and plug our two drives into here and enable super speed, we would get a, a double sized, doubles fast RAID array. Now I've already speed tested it. I'm, I'm not gonna do it again. You don't really need to see me do that. What I'm interested in doing now is testing the onboard uh, Intel RAID which is interesting because, no, yeah. So we're gonna bump uh, our BAID C drive over to the silicon image controller because that's the only way. I think we're gonna be able to get it to boot right now. We might have to reinstall drivers to get RAID going. And we're gonna find a SATA 1 here and SATA 2. So let us go into storage configuration, enable the RAID skis, and chances are we're not gonna be able to configure it in here. We're gonna get a prompt as post does its posting, which is that. That's the Marvel. And there, oh, it went too fast. Okay, well, let's try this again. That's good that it went too fast. Rate controllers that take forever to initialize are annoying. Hey, Marvel was do, 
Oh, I missed it again. Ah, and there we go. Non-RAID disc, non-RAID disc, if only it knew. Create a RAID volume. Oh, volume zero. We'll call it uh, the Velo Wrap. Yeah. RAID stripe zero, 128K, typical values. Ah, uh, yes, that's your block size. There are certain advantages and disadvantages to the block size. Word is, bigger block sizes will be higher performance, but will waste more space because you can only put one file on one block. If I say had a file that was 200K, it would use a block and change. If I had a file that was 28K, it would consume a whole 128K block and you might not be able to put another file on there. Something to that effect anyway. Oi, no. Yeah, max and create volume. It will be deleted. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there we go. The Velo Wrap. <laughs> Does that mean if we go into uh, boot settings, hard disks, <laughs> we're going to get the Velo Wrap on here. That's fine. First drive, I want you to boot off our uh, stock one. All right, let's give her. Let's give her a go. Oh, -ho! look at that. Yes, indeed. We need to install another driver, sir. Aha, now it's the RAID controller. Finish. Heh, <laughs> found Velo Wrap. <laughs> Chances are we're gonna have to initialize and format again. Oh, yeah, there it is. Convert disk wizard. Initialize, uh, no convert. Convert to what? Are you getting religious on me, computer? New partition. Near, near, near. E. <laughs> Velo Wrap. Oh, I'm surprised they let us put a troll in there. Best girl waifu on the screen. Who's the fastest RAID we've seen? Oh boy, this is some interesting information. So finally, Intel RAID, well, it's definitely outperforming the Dell RAID and the Super Speed. At 243 read, 244 write, 101 random read, 338 random write, 245 IOPS, 823 write IOPS, and latency, well, she's down there, bud. Clippy, chilling in there and it's just... So, look at these numbers. This is what we just pulled. Now let's compare that to one drive on the same controller. Yeah, yeah, look at that. We're seeing read and write speeds equivalent to the SSD, pretty much maxing things out. Definitely, we're getting double sustained. We're getting a small increase in reads, a small increase in writes, but an increase that's gonna matter. Slight increase in I read IOPS, but a significant increase in write IOPS. Latency, slight decrease, but I guess there's not much we can do about that, but yeah, <laughs> it's beating up. Out, the Marvel Silicon Image Controller, it's beating out that Dell controller, and it's giving us numbers we're expecting to see out of a RAID array. So that's winning. When I do my build video for this, I'm going to be using the Intel RAID. So I guess we're done here. This is a little bit of an explanation of one of the weirdest phenomenons that happened commonly in the mid-2000s when a lot of DIY gamers built their own PCs and just didn't know how to set them up right. And that's the reason why back in those days is when I was able to make my most money repairing and working on computers because people didn't know as much about them and didn't know how to do it properly. Now we have the YouTubes with the big name YouTubers telling everybody how to do the stuff. And we have computers that are so user friendly now you just slap stuff together and they work. Now any Tom, Dick and Harry can come out of the woodwork, claim to be a computer builder and build you something you're going to be happy with, assuming you didn't completely sell them on crap components. Oh well. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna join those ranks of the YouTubers, hopefully, and show you how to do some of this stuff a little bit right. This is the end of this demonstration. Now I'm gonna clone Windows over to that RAID array, and I'll see ya in the video on the Core 2 Duo, the processor that crushed AMD. Okay, waifu. See you later. Oh, yes, Clippy. Yes, I do want to save. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Clippy. I don't want to lose this data.